PBA superstars Norm Duke and P. Weber each have 37 career titles. If they want to get to number 38, they must knock off our number one seed, 14-time titleist Chris Barnes, in the finals of the PBA Milwaukee Open right now. America's top bowling cities, its rich history, where the sport goes back to 1966 when Miss Bowling Center Bolero Lanes hosted its first PBA tournament. Today we are back. The Geico Summer Swing continues with the Lucas Oil PBA Milwaukee Open. We have a step ladder bracket with some of the game's all time greats. Jason Sterner takes on four time titleist Mike Fagan. To start the show, Hall of Fame superstar Norm Duke and Pete Weber await the winners. Future Hall of Famer Chris Barnes is the top seed. Speaking of which, my Hall of Fame broadcast partner, Randy Peterson's Lane Level with Pete and Norm. Thanks, Dave. With me, two of the sport's biggest titans, Norm Duke and Pete Weber. Both of you players tied for third all-time on the win list at 37 wins apiece. And Norm, I'm going to start with you. You've pretty much accomplished everything that you can accomplish in the sport of bowling. Player of the Year awards, seven major titles, 37 titles overall. At age 49, what still keeps you motivated? Him. <laughs> Him. You know, uh, I, I didn't think, you know, 10 years ago that I'd ever catch Pete or, or Earl or Walter, and, and still the other two are, are way back. But once I got to Pete, it's kind of been, and I know it's in his mind, it's in mine, it's been a little... Little friendly war, you know. My love for Pete and uh, my respect for him is uh, knows no boundaries. So he has kind of reinvigorated me, I think. And you, you two have only faced each other on television three times. Is that all? That's it. I feel like I've bowled him every game I got on television. Three times is all. Who, who won? Uh, I think it's two to one in favor of Pete. Darned. Well, it is what it is right now, right? That could change today. Good luck. Thank Thanks, you. Norm. Now, Pete, you know, same kind of deal for you. You bowl pretty much everything. You bowl regionals. Now you're bowling the senior tour. You're still a major factor out here. In fact, having one of the best years of your career at age 50. How do you do it? I still love bowling. I still love traveling. I still love winning. You know, it, it, bowling's been in my blood all my life. Uh, and, you know, with dad bowling until 75, I, I can't let him bowl longer than me, so I got to keep going. What do, you, what do you look forward to most in terms of bowling on television, is it the possibilities of going up against a guy like Norm Duke? Oh, anytime you bowl Norm Duke, it's a it's a great honor to bowl him. Uh, I'm glad you refreshed my memory on the two to one thing there too. Uh, but uh, you know, me and Norm uh, always have great matches, so I expect another one today. Pete, thanks for your time. Good luck today. Great to hear from the Hall of Famers as tournament leader Chris Barnes had a choice of one of three oil patterns for the TV finals. He selected the Badger. All right, three events here at the Summer Swing coming in with the Badger at 52 feet, the Wolf at 32, and the Bear at 40 feet. By far the longest pattern of the PBA Animal Pattern Library. The Badger expect a medium scoring pace today. The number five seed is a PBA Tour champion with six PBA regional titles from McDonough, Georgia, Jason Sterner. Jason Sterner's got it. Football legend right behind him there, Terrell Owens, team owner of the Dallas Strikers here during the Geico Summer Swing. Got a great seat here in Milwaukee. And our first look at Jason Stern. This is Dave Ryan along with Randy Peterson. Great to have you with us. First ever broadcast of the PBA Tour on CBS Sports Network. Ten pin for Jason to begin his day. And it's great to be back working with you once again my friend it's been too long ready and this has been a fun experience be back in milwaukee so many old friends renewing those friendships this week has been really special there's a 10 pin there's a mark for jason sterner from just outside atlanta fifth year pro 
The number four player owns four PBA Tour titles with one major. From Fort Worth, Texas, the Argyle Assassin, Mike Fagan. <laughs> I love that nickname. That's unique. Mike Fagan, uh, he's got a lot of new things going on in his bowling life right now. Biggest signing with a new bowling ball manufacturer. Seven pin stands. Seven pin. Said there was a lot of added pressure on him because of that. You know, you always want to prove your wealth and or your worth rather to to the new company, and this is a great way to do it, making a TV show. A ripper five into the seven. 52 foot lubricity laden oil pattern. Oh Whiffs on number seven. He didn't like it on the release. Open frame for the St. John's alum. Well, it's really slick, and obviously uh, that spare ball got just a little bit right of the intended target and almost looked like it backed up. And that's how slick and how much oil there is on this uh, Badger oil pattern. 19th career TV appearance for Mike Fagan. Record coming in at 10 and 16. Four-time titleists. Great looking shot. All oh, 10 down. Recently married to Emily. Congratulations to Mike and Emily Fagan. He's got a pretty famous uh, neighbor there, and Terrell Owens. Got to meet Terrell throughout this summer swing. Made a nice appearance for us on CBS Sports Network. 153 career touchdowns in his great NFL run. Six-time Pro Bowler. Back to the bowling. That looks high, but it's a four-pin. Right. I really like this game. I think it's a really solid game. Gets the foul line beautifully. He's got great hand. I love, love the timing, the fact that he gets in front of that bowling ball, makes sure that he gets to the foul line before it. I think the other thing that makes Jason Sterner so scary out here is he's got a great mental game. First crew title came this year in Allen Park, outside Detroit, the 299 against West Milan in the title match of the Don Carter Classic. Yeah, he said after the win, he said it was overwhelming, and uh, all the response and the well-wishers, well -wish, well and um, he said uh, he kind of basked in the glory for quite some time. Took his time <laughs> soaking it in. You should, right? You remember Absolutely. that first title. Oh, not what he wanted there. Had a ringing ten pin that kept him from a 300 on TV against West. A little inside a target, and even on 52 feet, that ball's not going to hold its length. Jason Sterner has been really good in the 10th frame throughout this competition as well. Uh, I was watching bowling the other day, and he was bowling Patrick Allen in match play. And Patrick Allen struck out in the 10th frame to shoot 290. Sterner, st he stepped up in the 10th frame and threw all three strikes in the 10th for 300. Maple yeah, Moxie. I got it out of Yeah, he's got some of that. <laughs> I do too. Just, and just make sure you stay soft with it. And just, just let your hand go through it. All right. Get it over. He's talking to his, his uh, ball rep and coach, Chuck Gardner. Might make a ball change here. Help on number four. Mike Fagan was a player of the year candidate last season. A bit frustrating, though, in 2012-2013. Absolutely. I mean, this game um, can be very humbling. You know, you can be at, at the top one minute and, you know, down at the bottom the next. So it's, you know, it's important to kind of keep things in perspective. Obviously, uh, I'd like to be at the top every single event, but uh, I know that's not possible. So, you know, it's just about me learning from, you know, mistakes even at this point in my career. Um, and kind of, you know, making the adjustments and, and getting better. It was a great season for him. Won the USBC Masters, third in the Player of the Year award race. 
And this is only his second show of this season, so it's been a big difference. Every ball in the pocket thus far through four frames, just whipping on the seven pin, spare in the first, but three strikes right behind it. And that's exactly how you want to rebound after you're faced with a little adversity. It's only Jason's third career TV appearance. I asked him about his jersey. He said, hey, Falcons colors, baby. <laughs> Nine pin stands. Nine pin. Fayetteville, Georgia, about 20 miles away from Atlanta. That's where his home center is. He calls McDonough home. Kind of hard to believe that you'd see a bowling ball go right past the nine pin when it's not really curving in the back part of the lane. I mean, you'd see that more when, when the ball's really back ending really hard, like say on a wolf pattern or something. Something you wouldn't really expect on this pattern. Jason's dad is here. Open a bowling center. Jim did in the Atlanta area. When Jason was just a kid, Jason told us, boy, he was a bowling rat. From the time he could stand up and throw a ball down the lane, he has loved the sport his entire life. Jason's a class act, too. You won't meet a nicer guy out here. Just a good kid and a really good, really good bowler. Push. Not quite enough four-pin stands for Jason. He's got a little bit of early hook, which is not allowing the bowling ball to stay on line. Just a little early check. You're not going to see down lane reaction as much as you're going to see it up front. And that one just checked a little bit up front and got it off, off line and just high enough to leave the four pin. Six time regional titleist, Georgia State champ in 08, and a youth masters champ in 2003. A lot of prior winning in Jason's career. And as he told us this week, he lost his exemption in Michigan the year before at Allen Park in the event held there. And to win in that same center the next year to get his first career title was something he will never forget. Ten pin. Scott won't nudge it. Now, you didn't see a lot of messengers or scouts on 52 feet of slick oil. You see that pin coming in front of that 10 pin. Just not enough lane left to create a lot of angle into the pocket. And these players play what's called a fallback shot when the front part of the lane dries up and they have to move left. It's real old school. Celebrates his mark. A little sarcastic. Fun there for Mike Fagan. I'm going to take a look at the arsenal. He's using a Marvel Pearl, and the numbers are the hook potential of the equipment that he's actually brought to the television pair. And so the four bowling balls that he brought with him, it's got the strongest hook potential. Those numbers out of 10. Bunching all 10 down to the pit, 60 feet to success there for Mike Fagan. That was a good looking ball. And he's got a lead in our first stepladder bracket match. Stern, Fagan, the conclusion of this match comes up next from Milwaukee. Soil PBA Milwaukee Open on CBS Sports Network is brought to you by GEICO. Saving people money on more than just car insurance. By Jack Link's Beef Jerky. Feed your wild side. And by Barbasol. Shave like a man. Great bowling city. And beautiful late spring weather here in Milwaukee, Wisconsin. Randy, let's break down the oil that we're seeing at this Geico Summer Swing and the Greater Milwaukee Open. Well, the, I'm going to show you what the wolf pattern looks like at 32 feet. Check out how this ball boomerangs back to the pocket. Lots of friction, but on the 52-foot Badger, uh, that simply isn't the case. Uh, this ball's picking up speed as it's going through the pins. 
And while we went to break, Jason Sterner looking for even more advice, asking uh, some advice from Rick Benoit. Yeah. Any ball that wants to tip the down the lane, whether it's your hand or whether it's the ball, that's Norm why you're Duke. leaving it. Okay. Now, I don't know if you have a ball okay. or a hand that keeps it from tipping off of that spot. So it's got to be a little bit less than that tip. It can't tip down. Okay. You're playing the right angles. You're doing everything right. You can dial your hand back. If, you're, if this is a little bit too hard, maybe you can soften that up a little bit. Okay. Because I think you're doing everything right. It's just ball motion at yeah. the pins is tipping a little bit more. The strong the one seemed to be too quitty. And then I went, the last two shots was a more weaker one that was more sideways that saw it harder. But I'm afraid that's going to force my angles open. It is. Right. Yeah. It is. So we got to create shape down lane, less shape than what you have. And my mind is the ball looks good in the front. It don't look bad. And I think you're doing the right thing. If you can do it with your hands, stick with it. I don't think you go to a ball ball with more surface, or stronger layout, or anything like that. I think if you can do it with your hand, that's your best bet. Rick Benoit, a former ball rep out here, and he still coaches a lot of the best players. Uh, he was a coach to Chris Barnes for many years out here. And Still does a lot of coaching around the world. Great advice. John Gardner listening into earlier chipping in with a couple of tips for Jason. Six frame. First match step ladder finals from Milwaukee. And, and I think to simplify what Rick Benoit was telling Jason Sterner. He just needs to make his hand a little bit softer at the release point so that the ball doesn't dig in early. And that's exactly what that shot looked like. He looks like he's just a little cleaner at the bottom. The ball doesn't read early. It pushes down the lane, retains a little bit more when it goes through the pins, and then just shreds the rack. A little less grabby through the release point. I'll take the... Jason, pretty coachable from Rick Benoit. Great mid-match advice. So you can build on this strike. Seventh frame to go down by three pins. Double wood. And the 2-8. Well, with the softer hand at the bottom of the swing, now comes an adjustment on the right lane because, remember, he was going high on this lane, and now that he's a little bit cleaner at the bottom, the ball scoots a little bit longer down the lane. Ah. Didn't like it upon release for good reason. Please. And, and Eight. Open frame. And, and I'm not sure, sorry, Dave, I'm not sure why... He decided to throw the ball straight at double wood, especially with this much oil on the lanes. All he had to do was move a little bit right with his feet and use the same strike target, and the 2-8 shouldn't have been that big an issue. Key mistake. Work on a strike. Back to Mike Fagan. You can go up by 35 pins here. 10-pin nudged and stands. Mm. Oh, you can throw it better than that, man. Jeez, that was awful. Oh, boy, There's boy. the king of swing. Pretty nice nickname, and he didn't like this shot at all. And it's not a bad thing when you don't like it and you actually hit the pocket and lead a ten pin. He missed an opportunity there, Dave. He was working on a strike. He could have increased his lead. Instead, it's just nine spare, and the lead is now 25. So not over yet. Mike certainly in the driver's seat. Norm Duke awaits the winner of this one. Legendary Hall of Famer with 37 titles is the three seed. Then there's Pete Weber, and oh, by the way, top seed of Chris Barnes. And our event here today, we are loaded with great talent. Much better shot. 
His wife likes it. Good shot here on the left lane. You see that ball just right of the middle arrow. Not a lot of room covered in the back part of the lane, but it's 10 in the pit for the Argyle Assassin. <laughs> That's got to be one of the all-time great sports nicknames. Back to Sterner. Good shot there. Now, let's see if he makes a little adjustment on the left lane. Remember the last time he went light. This is a beautiful shot by Jason Sterner. Come on, believe it. Max scores. Really needs it. Oh, doesn't have it. Three six standing. Wow. Trouble on the left lane the entire match for Jason Sterner. The shot before goes light. He tried to be nice to it at the bottom, meaning not grab it. This time, instinctively, he knows he's got to give it just a little bit to get it to turn the corner. That ball checked immediately, went right through the nose. Picks up the spare. And so late in the match, the those strikes desperately have a chance to track down Mike Fagan. Foundation frame for Mike, chance to go up by 35 pins. And take real control of this one. To advance on to face Norm Duke. That's a little better right there. He liked it for good reason. Mash is all 10 down to the pit. <laughs> I love it. You know, it doesn't like there's a whole, doesn't look like there's a whole lot going on because the bowling balls are going so straight down the lane. But it is very critical at release point, making sure that you're doing exactly what you're supposed to be doing with the release. In other words, you try to get on it too much, the ball's going to hook early. You're too soft, like that shot. You're too soft at the bottom. I think I got that other lane. The ball's right. not going to hook at all. The left lane all of a sudden now looks like it's a bit right. of a problem. This is the first time that we've seen Mike struggle on the left lane. Jason Sterner struggled on the left lane. So Tell we Illinois, need to keep an eye yeah. on this left lane. It's not the big four. It's the four, seven, nine, ten. He has wrapped up the match. <laughs> Kick out the seven pin to take out the others. But he does win. That was not a pretty finish, but he'll take it gladly. As he knocks off Jason Sterner in our first step ladder final match here today from Milwaukee. Match two, Norm Duke awaits. Great week, great run for Atlanta's Jason Sterner, but he will fall short of his second career title. Mike Fagan thinking about the nickel. Five career championships. First, a huge challenge awaits. The great Norm Duke and Fagan square off next. Mike Fagan knocked off Jason Sterner with the gets up the stepladder bracket here in Milwaukee. Next up, legendary Norm Duke. Are you ready? We've been talking about this throughout the entire Geico Summer Swing. Reunited, does it feel so good? You said you weren't going to sing. <laughs> You're supposed to help me on that. Reunited, no, and no. it's... Stop. See, Great that's to be back you with you again with Randy after all these years apart. Broadcasting the PBA Tour on CBS Sports Network for the first time. Great to watch some of the all-time greats here. We still have Norm Duke to come against Mike Fagan. Yeah, uh, Norm Duke has been around for a long time, and he's made a fortune uh, on what you're going to see him do, do today, and that's throw the ball straight. Uh, normally, we'll see him throw the ball straight from farther right, but uh, Norm has been a human ATM machine anytime he gets a chance to throw the ball straighter. And Terry Lawrence getting a good picture there, some video, some instruction with Norm Duke, and still Pete Weber and Chris Barnes to come a loaded field here in Milwaukee today. How do you see this breaking down? Well, I think it's going to 
come down to whoever has to finish on the left lane. And, and what I saw in the last match, the left lane started to look real squirrely. Um, Jason Sterner had trouble with it throughout the match, and then Mike Fagan had trouble with it in the 10th frame. That bodes well for Chris Barnes, the tournament leader, because since he's the tournament leader, he gets to choose where he starts and where he finishes. He might just have his opponent end up finishing on that left lane, and it could be a big advantage for him. As he told us just before the broadcast today, really love the 52-foot Badger pattern, the most comfortable throughout the tournament here and the event in Milwaukee. We're looking forward to watching Norm Duke head-to-head -head with Mike Fagan next as the step ladder event continues. Terrell Owens is getting some good video because he loves bowling. He's the team owner of the Dallas Strikers. Next, it's Duke and Fagan. Welcome back to the Lucas Oil PBA Milwaukee Open on CBS Sports Network. Why, well, thank you, Norm. Well said. Here are the brackets, and we climb the step ladder. Norm Duke and Mike Fagan are next. Pete Weber and Chris Barnes still await. Superstars of the sport on CBS Sports Network. Going head to head. Great competition to come here. Early re rack here for Mike Fagan. Oil breaking down. Things are changing. All about the adjustment, the anticipation, and the strategy. Into match two. Come on, Mike Five, Five, seven. seven. Yeah, in today's modern power right. game, you don't see that left a lot, especially by a player that possesses the amount of power that Mike Fagan does. Even though he's trying to go straight on a very long pattern, I get that. But throughout this competition on the 52-foot Badger, we've seen players leaving five pins, solid eights, or excuse me, solid eight tens, and now a pocket 5-7. But what's interesting is that Duke, the higher seed, has chosen to finish on the left lane. Tough pick up, and how about nothing? He'll whiff on the five. An early open frame for Mike Fagan, surprising after he just competed against Jason Stern. Great attempt here, but just not enough ball, not enough back end to get the ball to catch the five and slide it into the seven. The number three seed owns 37 PBA Tour titles, two-time PBA Player of the Year from Claremont, Florida, PBA Hall of Famer Norm Duke. 109th career TV appearance for the great Norm Duke. How about that? Ninety-eight career TV wins. Thirty-first year on tour. Living legend on CBS Sports Network. All ten down for Norm. Well, Norm Duke using the entire length of the approach. Just parallel to the approach, that backswing, that's about as high as it gets, that perfect balance that has made him over $3 million in career earnings out on this tour. I think a big advantage for Norm on this long pattern is the fact that he still uses 16 pounds. I think the extra pound, remember, the majority of the players out here are using 15 pounds. I think the extra pound's big. There you see it right there. Why do you mean 15 pound versus 16 pound ball? The majority of the, I would say that it's probably 60, 40, 70, 30 percent of players use 15 pound equipment out on the tour these days because of their high rev rates. They don't need the extra pound of weight to get the ball to drive through the pins. Norm is not a high rev guy. He's a middle of the road or straight guy in terms of power, in terms of hook potential, but that extra pound. 15 to 16 is going to help him on an extremely long oil pattern. It's going to get his ball to bounce hit. back. Sorry, it's going to get his ball to hit harder. Right lane ball change. After that tough open to begin this match. And you wouldn't think on this 52 foot pattern that the uh, 
that the lanes would be going through a lot of transition, but they are, and it's going to happen up front more than anything. Remember Chris Barnes, the top seed. Pick this oil pattern, 52 feet. Terrell Owens, team owner of the Dallas Strikers. First year of the PBA team competition. Mike Fagan's wife right next to Terrell Owens. And, of course, Norm Duke is Terrell's team's franchise player. Saw a nice high five just before Norm started competing with Terrell. Perfect ball in the one-three pocket for Mike Fagan. Well, that's a perfect pocket hit, all ten in the pit, and it's a nice ball change thus far for Mike Fagan. Third all-time matchup, Norm Duke, head-to-head -head with Mike Fagan. He's 2-0 so far. Here's a 10-pin. I promise you, if that was a 15-pound ball the way Norm just threw that one, there would be an 8-pin standing with it. Ball is pretty flat entering the pocket, and in fact, it looked like it was actually fading away from the headpin. Has his mark. Milwaukee houses one of the most iconic bowling spots in America. Holler House, given the name by a German woman who cannot believe the noise coming from the establishment. The tavern that downstairs houses the oldest certified bowling center in the United States. Two wood lanes are manned by pin steers. The bar area certainly also has its share of eclectic memorabilia left behind by its patrons. Have you been to the Holler House? I've been there. I actually cool signed, spot, huh? I signed the wall. Nice. That's what makes Milwaukee such a great bowling town and Warren Duke such a great bowler. Perfect shot. In his fourth frame. Yeah, and that bowling ball was all over the pocket like cheddar cheese on a bratwurst. <laughs> Have you had a brat this week? Uh, I lost count at 15. <laughs> Food here is great. Mike competes for the Motown muscle. Fourth frame, four mm. pin. And working on a strike, he, he knew he wanted that, or needed that to get back into the match and cut into the deficit. Pretty good shot here. Remember the last time on the right lane, he. He left a 10-pin, and now it's a 4-pin. Hasn't missed the pocket yet. He's got an open frame in the first, and he's trailing by 21. I thought it was interesting hearing from Mike Norm. Norm Duke facing him, Randy, about the follow-up to such a great year. How challenging it's got to be. Near Player of the Year honors was right in it. Down to the stretch run. Didn't win Player of the Year, was third that year. And you have a lot of success. Matching that with the great bowlers these guys are competing against is not easy. Yeah, and what really turned it around for him, Dave, was, was his mental game. And once he got confident in his physical ability, that's when things really started to happen. Four pin. Another four pin. But, you know, he said when he feels, oh. when, he, when, when he's at the top of his game, he feels like he can beat anybody out here. And you have to have uh, that type of mindset to be a winner out on this tour. And all of a sudden, maybe questioning the ball change because it's back to back four pins. Mike Fagan, along with Chris Barnes, Andres Gomez, the only bowlers in this Geico Summer Swing in Milwaukee to make the cut in all four events. Norm using a Marvel Pearl. Those numbers, you see the 9.0, that's hook potential out of a possible 10. It's interesting as Norm is actually using the ball that Mike Fagan used in the first game. And a much better shot on the right lane this time. For the Wee Icemen. 32 pin lead on a double. Working on a spare is Fagan when he's back up. One looks for the turkey. Six frame. 
Really expand the lead here. Stays hot. 42 pin lead. Norm looks good with a turkey. He's bidding for his 38 all-time title. Pete Weber stands in his way up ahead, who's also got 37. Big stars on tour on the air today. Two great bowlers. Norm Duke, Pete Weber, 74 career titles between them. Both in the Hall of Fame. 64 years combined on the PBA Tour. Amazing numbers. The question is how they approach the sport of bowling now at this point of their careers. I've always loved bowling. I still do. I, you know, it, it's, it's, it will be a life love. But uh, as far as enjoying bowling, that's a tricky question. I enjoy winning. I really do. I enjoy winning more than anything. Uh, I don't enjoy bowling as much because I've done it professionally for 32 years. And, you know, it's just, kid gets old. Oh, I still love the travel, I still love the competition, and I still love winning. And, and as of right now, I just have no plans of retirement because I I'm still feel like I'm throwing the ball well, and I still feel like I can win. And Pete, waiting in the wings here as a two seed. The two greats are tied for third all-time with 37 wins. Walter Williams, Jr., 47, Earl Anthony, 43. And PDW and Norm are next. And as they told Randy, top of the broadcast in the pre-match interview, Norm still chasing Pete. Pete's chasing Norm. Provides an extra motivation at this point of their careers. I think when uh, Pete caught Norm Duke in career tiles, that lit another fire under Norm. <laughs> Six frame for Fagan. Four pin. Four pin. Michael Fagan's in big trouble. He can't hit the pocket. When he does, he doesn't strike. And Norm Duke is starting to run away and hide. I think one of the greatest aspects of this tournament was the fact that the players competed on three different oil patterns and in order to make the top five you have to be a versatile player and you're you know we're witnessing some of the most versatility the tour has to offer in Duke, Fagan, Weber, Chris Barnes and even Jason Sterner. That's a much better shot. You know if one of those three patterns wasn't your bread and butter you had to hang on and you had to be patient and you had to have the mental fortitude to just hang in there and know that maybe your pattern was the next day or the day after. There are max scores, bottom left of your screen. Seventh frame, chance for a four bagger, and a 53 pin lead. Feel it! Four straight, big lead for Norm. Other finishers, Michael Haugen Jr. made one of the shows here at the Geico Summer Swing, as did Bill O'Neill. We saw Dan McClellan as well. Chris Lowshedder won his first career yeah. PBA Tour title. My good buddy Dino Castillo there. Nice to see Patrick Allen healthy and bowling well again. So many of the game's greats here in Milwaukee for our Summer Swing. Not five straight, two stands for Norm. Could have been a lot worse. That's all right. Norm's got such a, a soft touch at the bottom of the swing. PBA champion Lonnie Wallachek tweeted earlier in the tournament that the only time Norm Duke grabs the bowling ball is when he pulls it off the rack. And I, I thought it was really funny at first, and then I thought about it, and I said, you know what, he's pretty right with that. Uh, even though Norm left the two pin, it was just a little soft out of his hand going a little bit to the right. But he's got such a great touch at the bottom of the swing, and that's probably why he's won 37 times in his career. Oh 
Ten pin for Mike Fagan. Oh, nothing well, like so much for that. Nothing like kicking a man when he's down. 32-year-old, originally from Long Island, now lives in Cowtown, USA, Fort Worth, Texas. With wife Emily. Now you can outfit yourself like the pros with official PBA jerseys that are available exclusively at PBA.com. The jerseys made from high-performance fabric can be customized for each person or team. Head to PBA.com today. Click on the custom jersey link to get started. Love those jerseys. Look at sharp they're in. Uh, I wished I had my own jersey. I don't, but I wish I did. You know, you'd think after winning a PBA 50 event, I could nice pick up. and I could talk somebody into getting me my own jersey. I'm going to make a phone call on Monday. Somehow I think we can arrange that. Norm's going to try to polish off Mike Fagan here. The end of the night. He'll do just that. And Norm Duke wins. Terrell Owens lights it. You can see that in the background. And guess who's next? His old rival, his good buddy. 37 time title is Pete Weber is next. It's a matchup everyone wanted to see. Norm Duke, Pete Weber, next on CBS Sports Network. Big win for Norm Duke in our second match, 238-194. Over Michael Fagan, striking in six of the first seven frames, plus a four-bagger, all Norm needed. Randy, let's talk about Player of the Year possibilities on the PBA Tour. Jason Belmonte heading into the summer swing with one title among the leaders in many categories. Jason Belmonte is certainly positioned himself at the top of the leaderboard, in my opinion, uh, because of the statistical categories that he's leading. He also has a major victory. So you can count that one title uh, and make it more like one and a half uh, for that major championship win. Scott Norton still right there. Mika Koivuniemi hasn't won stateside this season. How about Mika? He has titles in 20 countries. Certainly made his mark on the professional bowlers tour. 11 PBA titles, including three majors. His last major win came in the 2011 PBA Tournament of Champions. This year, titles at the Japan Cup and the Cotter Open. Victory in Japan was his second Japan Cup title, having won in 2008 as well. He's made the TV Finals in three events this year and leads the PBA in earnings. The star from Finland now living just outside Detroit in Heartland, Michigan. Ranked 49th in the list of the top 50 players in PBA history, looking to join a select group as a three-time Player of the Year, Mika Koivuniemi. He is a top candidate for top player on the PBA Tour. Pete Weber, one thing he's never done is win Player of the Year. Maybe this is his year. Great matchup coming up. Two Hall of Famers head-to-head -head in Milwaukee. Pete Weber, Norm Duke, old buddies on the lane together again. Lucas Oil PBA Milwaukee Open on CBS Sports Network is being brought to you by Lucas Oil, the world leader of high performance and problem solving lubricants for everyday cars and trucks. By Icy Hot, America's number one topical pain reliever. And by Bud Light, it's the sure sign of a good time. Here we go. Great day in Milwaukee outside, much better inside though. We've been waiting for this one. Lucas Oil, PBA Milwaukee Open. What a matchup between Pete Weber and Norm Duke. Best of friends. Hall of Famers. 74 titles between them. 14 different Hall of Famers have won an event in Milwaukee. Neither of these two, though, have ever won a tour title in this great bowling city. Maybe history made here today. And I think what's really amazing is the fact that these two have only bowled each other on television three times, this being the fourth, with Weber getting the best of Duke, winning two and losing one. And another interesting stat, Weber average against Duke on television, 233 and a half. Duke's 
average. 232 and a half. Pretty tight matches. Two great players. The number two player owns 37 PBA Tour titles, including 10 majors from St. Anne, Missouri. PBA Hall of Famer, Pete Weber. With wife Tracy right behind him next to Terrell Owens and PBA Tour Commissioner Tom Clark. And this is probably one of the few times you'll see Norm Duke have more hair than Pete Weber. Get it up there. I like Pete's look. Very streamlined. With the traditional sunglasses. Ten pin. Started early in his career. TV lights the glare. When he was much younger bowler. Bothered him. Tried the sunglasses. Had success. And has always gone back to the shades on TV. He left the flat ten and looked at Norm and said, I matched you. <laughs> This is definitely a match that you would like to uh, record or that you would want to record on your DVR. Yeah, before it started, Norm gave Peter a hug. Said, good luck. I love you, man. I mean, they are really tight. Well, they've been good friends for a long time, but even more so fierce competitors for... 30 plus years on this tour. And you go to battle that for that long with uh, with a friend of yours. You know, there's a lot of mutual admiration and respect for each other and what each player has done in their career. Six stands for Pete. It's not a pattern, excuse me, it's not an oil pattern that you would expect Pete Weber to do real well on because it's so, it's so long and you have to go so straight. We're used to watching Pete curve the back part of the lane, but again, it's just a testament to how great he is and how versatile he is. Long approach. Norm. Mm. Six pin. <laughs> that was a much harder match than yours, by the way. <laughs> Norm starts back pretty far. Why is that, Randy? He uses the entire approach to generate speed. With that 16-pound ball you talked about earlier in the broadcast. Picks up the mark. All-time title, as we mentioned earlier. The legend, Walter A. Williams, Jr., number one at 47. Passing Earl Anthony a couple years back. Norm and Pete are tied for third. I'm really proud of the fact that I, actually, I have actually bowled every one of those names in match play or on television at some point in my career. Pretty cool. A great list. That's a little better. Four pin trips out late. Great touch again by Norm Duke. Just a pinch high. Gets a nice break. Trips the 4 7 late. And that was the first strike of our match. Third frame for Pete. Still loves to be out on tour. Not the shot he wanted there, a three. Well, that looked like a little bit of a timing issue. Pete just didn't look comfortable. Real straight-legged. You see him stand up on that shot there. Was not a good shot and left out of his hand immediately.
whacked myself that time. All spares repeat so far. Left lane now, fourth frame. Pete using an IQ Tour no. edition. He's got stronger stuff he can go to, but he wants to try to keep the ball fairly straight. Not a lot of down lane reaction. Perfect shot, all 10 down for Pete. Gracie, by Pete's side for so many of his incredible Hall of Fame moments. Yeah, well, she's been really great for Pete for a lot of years, and you know they've been married for a long time. And I know that uh, Pete would be lost without Tracy. It's a it's a match made in heaven. Expecting grandkids coming in the fall. They're both excited about that. Response for Norm. And the wee Iceman cometh. Things are eating up here in Milwaukee. And the lead increases to 11 as Norm saws the five out of here. And watch the subtlety in ball reaction. Just enough to get the five fin out. Again, 16 pounds. I think it's, I think it's a little bit of an edge. You know who else uses 16 pounds? Our tournament leader, Chris Barnes. He's the one seed. There's some help. You know, that's that's kind of rude. i got to be honest with you. That's kind of rude to do that to Pete Weber because that's what Pete's father used to do. That is a Dick Weber hit right there. Watch the head pin. We call this the wall shot. Hit him thin and watch him spin. Billy Whalu made that phrase famous, and Dick Weber was famous for that hit right there. Pete's dad, legendary Dick Weber, pit bowling into his 70s. Pete, now 50 years old, said, oh, i got to keep going, at least as long as dad did. They were so close. Yeah. Our two Hall of Famers are getting it going here in Milwaukee. Double for Pete Weber, the Duke lead is cut to 11 pins, sixth frame. Stay still. You, stay still, please. I thought he was talking to me. He's Ladies looking right at me. Well, you can't tell with the sunglasses. Yeah. <laughs> Thank God it's not me. I don't want Pete mad at me. You remember that that show where he won the U.S. Open? Who do you think you are? I am. I was petrified. I couldn't get out of my chair. I've covered TV sports Randy for a long time. That number on the bottom is one of the most shocking I've ever seen. Only three prior matchups with Norm Duke on TV. Heading to this one. It's amazing. All 10 down to the pit. Only the fourth all time matchup, and we're proud to bring it to you on CBS Sports Network. One pin match now, Dave. And things are tied in Milwaukee. Turkey for Pete, Turkey for Norm. Working on strikes. Chris Barnes awaits the winner. Great match to finish coming up. Welcome back to the Geico PBA Summer Swing on CBS Sports Network. Moments ago, Pete was meeting with the wife, Tracy, also a very good bowler herself. So I just decided, well, try to get behind the ball. Still locked it, but slow down a little bit to let it go. And it's now it's coming off my hand. I can feel it. My hand, my hand's open. Well, when his hand opens at the finish, uh, he's a bad man. And he's telling Tracy, you know, a little more loft. Get that hand to open up. And all of a sudden now he sees the reaction he wants to see on this 52-foot badger oil pattern. This is going to be a great finish. One pin match. Six for Norm. Four pin. Remember this event. Culmination of all three of the animal 
or the new animal patterns, the badger, wolf, and bear, and no badgers, wolves, or bears were hurt in the making of these new oil patterns. Thank goodness. Hey, uh, Dave, I know it's been a while for you doing the bowling, but right now this match is all even. What more could you ask for? I just brought you up to speed. All right, buddy, come on. Coached himself for the board number reference. And there's a 10 pin and a mark for Norm. And he was talking about where he's going to put his feet and what target he's going to look at the next time he's up on that lane. Four pin, 10 pin for Duke back to back after a three bagger. Yeah. Weber takes the lead sitting on the bench. Up by one can increase it to 11. His last win, the, Barbas the Barbasol PBA Tournament of Champions, where he beat Jason Belmonte playing sixth arrow. In pretty Indianapolis. Pretty good stuff. Ten pin. Ten. Trying to build on a lead. Instead, we're back to tied in this matchup of Hall of Famers. And you're not supposed to open this oil pattern up very much, but... Then again, there's not a lot of players that throw it like Pete Weber. And you can see him actually bellying the ball just a little bit. Unfortunately, it was a soft 10. A spare here, and we're back to even. There's 10 pin. There's the mark. Once again, the match is even. Now to the eighth. Tied up. We'll have a one ball roll off if it's tied at the end of regulation. And the higher seed will get choice of starting lane and order. And that would be Pete Weber. Defeat to success for Pete Pig Strike. Gracie enjoying that. <laughs> Pete Weber's got a great look right now, and I don't expect him to miss the pocket the rest of the game. Look how relaxed he, he is there. Ball change. Late nudge on number seven. And down she goes. Actually went to something a little more aggressive early and barely kicks out the seven late. Foundation frame now. All even. A great touch on that shot there to jam it right into the 1-3. 
What a match. Two of the greatest all time in the history of the sport deadlocked. Going into the ninth and tenth frame with that hit right there, Duke takes a 10 pin lead. Weber needs to strike here in the ninth to tie it up. If both players go off the sheet, they will tie it 247 apiece. Six. I threw that ball pretty good. Let's see what this ball does halfway down the lane. It starts to grab and goes through the nose, and I guarantee you that's the last thing Pete thought this ball would do. Remember the last time on the right lane, it was a light half ten. Pete Weber now in jeopardy of losing this match. Does pick up this pair, but Norm's in great shape. With his foundation frame strike in the ninth. Whoever strikes out in the tenth frame, he'll force Duke to strike first ball in the tenth. How many times have we seen some of the greatest in the game and their matches come down to the tenth frame? What the sport's all about. One shot making like that. Here, Iraq, please. He's been the Hall of Fame since 1998, Norm since 2009. Pete Weber taking a re -rack. Let's take a look at his game. That uh, beautiful swing anymore. there. And, and then check out this position. Look how level his head is going to stay from the time he gets into that pivot step to the bottom of the swing. And then there's that open hand and the trademark result of the fourth greatest players, the fourth greatest player in the history of bowling. Two re racks, the max used by Pete before this shot. And he wants to be certain. Needs it. Will not get it, nine pin. Are you freaking kidding me? Solid nine. Really? Solid. Oh, Pete! Pete showing great <laughs> restraint right now with uh, with the language. Obviously, pretty upset at the solid nine pin. Really good shot. The ball goes right by the nine. Okay. Well, not anymore. Norm Duke needs a mark. You can see the disgust after leaving that solid nine. He knew that was probably his only chance of winning. Duke just needs any mark. Hang on. Two four. Two four remaining there for Norm. Not the shot he wanted. Trying to put this one away. Huge break that he tripped the back pin out. I believe it was the five pin that tripped late. Yep. Nice break from tripping the five and the eight out. And there's his mark. Came down to the 10th frame. 
And it was all about a solid nine pin. The shot in the ninth for Weber, he liked, went high. Duke just needs to stay behind the foul line and get the ball to hit any pin. Which he does. Needed three, gets ten. That's all right. Way to go, man. Way right. to go. Get him. Get him. Two great friends. Head to head again. But only one Hall of Famer can advance. That's Norm Duke. He'll take on the top seed Chris Barnes next from Milwaukee. Two PBA superstars are set to go head to head. A title on the line. Talked about that nine pin late for Pete Weber. Not a great break for Pete. Good one for Norm Duke. Tracy, Pete's wife, congratulates Norm, who advances to take on Chris Barnes in the championship match. Who is qualified as the number one seed, picking the Badger 52 foot oil pattern for our championship match here today. Chris Barnes headed for the Hall of Fame one day without question at 43 years old. One of six to have won Boeing's Triple Crown. Just needs that USBC Masters. He went all four. 0708 PBA Player of the Year. As we'll find out, he and his wife Linda have special interest off the lanes as well. Well, obviously, JDRF is a big thing for us. And uh, we started this Strikeout Diabetes fundraiser. Uh, we've run it for the last four years now. Uh, Linda does an amazing job putting that whole thing together. Uh, a weekend full of uh, pros coming in, trick shots, and, and colored pin, and auction items, and raffle items, and sponsored lanes. And it's a big event, plus a tournament on the, on the weekend. And so uh, all of DFW is kind of combined in on the effort. And uh, we've been able to raise over a quarter million dollars just in our, in our little fundraiser alone. Uh, obviously, my son, Troy, is uh, type 1 diabetic, has been since he's six years old, uh, which involves him having to check his blood sugar about a half a dozen times a day, and he requires insulin to uh, to stay alive. So we're hoping uh, to help be a part of the solution. And uh, there's a lot of quality of life things that have gotten better and better, and uh, uh, there's a lot of optimism that there's some cure things on the horizon. Thanks to Chris and Linda Barnes. Great things happening in Dallas-Fort Worth for that cause. Coming up, Lucas Oil PBA Milwaukee Open Championship match. A battle of two PBA superstars and ahead. Barnes, Duke, a title on the line. So how did we get to this point? It is time for the GEICO Championship recap. Mr. Peterson, get us updated completely, sir. Thank you, Mr. Ryan. Match number one, it was Jason Sterner against Mike Fagan. The Argyle assassin just shredding racks. There. And it's Ted in the pit. He takes down Jason Sterner, 198 to 182. Fagan's next opponent would prove to be formidable. It's the Wee Iceman, Norm Duke. Duke throws a double early. Then he throws a four-bagger in the middle. Norm Duke all over Mike Fagan, 238, 194. Which set it up a match for the ages. Norm Duke. Pete Weber, 74 titles between the two. The match was all even going into the ninth and tenth. Nine. Weber leaves a stall at nine. Duke needs a spare. Duke gets it. Setting up a great title match between Norm Duke and Chris Barnes. Stab ladder bracket. One match to go. Barnes, the top seed, has been waiting. He's been watching. And now he'll bowl against Norm Duke. Chris and Norm have only faced each other four times on TV. Barnes one and three head to head with Norm. Duke has averaged 237.25 against Chris Barnes. So like the Weber match, not a lot of head to heads on TV until now. We'll take it. Good start for Norm Duke.
The tournament leader is a 14-time PBA Tour champion, former PBA Rookie and Player of the Year and Triple Crown winner from Double Oak, Texas, Chris Barnes. He's been in all his great career, just less years than Pete and Norm. But Chris still among the greats of the game, $2.04 million in career earnings, eighth all-time on the list. Perfect start. Take a look at Chris Barnes from profile. Look at how short that first step is in a five-step approach, and that's to keep him nice and slow. That cup wrist at the top of the swing. But one of the things that most people don't understand or don't realize about Chris Barnes is he has one of the tightest thumb holes on the tour. Not what that does is it makes him relax that hand at the bottom of the swing, almost impossible for him to grab it. Down it goes. Perfect start for Chris Barnes. Three of the tightest thumb holes on tour. Sean Rash, Tommy Jones, and that man right there, Chris Barnes. And a nice break to start this match against Norm Duke. Boy, look at the trip 4-9. Second for Norm. Now on the flip side, Norm Duke actually uses a big thumb. And his finger hole sizes aren't very tight as well, but he does it a little differently. His finger holes and his thumb hole are extremely sharp. So if he were to grab it, as you see the light mixer there to even the score, if he were to grab the holes, look at how you can see that the finger holes, look at there's absolutely no bevel in the fingers or the thumb. If he were to grab those holes, those holes would shred his fingers. No grab there. So he does a little bit, little bit differently than Chris Barnes. Ten pin, no ball layout. The equipment these great bowlers bring to the TV shows, and regular PBA competition, all specified. Arm the heavier ball. Has his mark. He watched Chris Barnes put his thumb in this ball. He actually has to jam it in there. Watch this. Fingers first. Look at him just squeeze that thumb into that tight thumb hole. He, now he relaxes the back of the nail against the back of the thumb hole. <laughs> Five. And what makes the ball come off of his hand is the inertia going from the cup to uncup position at the bottom of the swing. Not going to see Chris Barnes leave a solid five pin very often. Check out the setup position for Chris Barnes. He's got the wrist cupped already. And, and then let's take a look at Norm's setup. Much more relaxed, softer, and his hand a little bit more on the side of the ball. But you can see just from that picture there, there's a lot more grip tension coming from Norm Duke, and that's because of the size of the holes. Even though Chris is in a cup position, as you take a look at his arsenal using the smackdown, he's very relaxed. And that mode pays off for a perfect shot. Playing 25 26 board. It's just like back, bowling back in the 80s when we used to play fallback. You didn't have that big change of direction down the lane, so you got the ball to read a little bit early. You got it to fall back just a little bit and have it set right in front of the 1-3 pocket. One of the best ever playing that shot, Dave Husted, who won three United States Opens. 
for frame. Right lane for Norm. Ten pin stands. Well, Norm's not going to miss the pocket, but getting his ball to face and go through the pins the right way may be the only issue that he has. You can see that ball fading the entire way. That right lane looks extremely tight down lane as well. Looks like the close matchup with Norm and Pete. This one should go right down the wire as well. Norm Duke making a ball change on the left lane. Going back to the ball he started with. And that hit is more than acceptable on this all pattern. This is the Dick Weber special again. Get it into the squish zone and trip the 5 7 late. In his career, not a lot of success as a top seed. And he knows it well. But he Runs is one three pocket that time. He is a great technician. Let's take a look at the Lucas Oil shot of the day here, Randy. Second frame trips the four nine to catch that early double. Looks for a turkey here. Sixth frame. To go up by 21 pins. Does just that. I think he's a lot better mentally on television the last couple of years than he's ever been in his career. He had moments before where he was really good, but I think mentally he's probably as good as he's ever been. Only four times in title matches. Hard to imagine. All time. Four pin up for Norm. Heading into the summer swing, the number one seed, four and seven in title matches this year. Norm Duke looking the trip this for it. Not to be. He's falling behind down by 21. A little more than halfway through the match. There's the spare. Chris Barnes in control right now. The finishers. Andres Gomez of Colombia. Jake Peters is one here. First career. PBA title at the Geico Summer Swing. Event ending, King of the Swing. Already we know Jake is in. Chris Lowshedder. All the winners. Belmonte. Chris, Belmonte. Chris Barnes in as well. And Norm Duke has locked himself in, win or lose, against Barnes. Wants to keep on bowling for the big bucks. Chris Barnes looks for the four-bagger, seventh frame, right lane to go up by 31 pins. Ten pin stands. Jason Belmonte, Chris Lowshedder here at the Geico Summer Swing. We're top seeds winning. Josh Blanchard, top seed of another event won by Jake Peters, who was a two seed. So despite lack of success from the top seed throughout the PBA season, some 
winners for the number one spot here in Milwaukee. Chris wants to keep that going here. And Dave, to me, Chris looks really comfortable. He looks really confident right, right now. And I right think here. as he takes a re-rack on the left line, and I think the reason why is because this oil pattern is very straightforward. It's right there in front of you. Being 52 feet in length, you know that you're not going to stand to the left and throw it to the gutter and back. You know that you're not going to try to pipe it up first arrow. You're going to get left of the hooking heads, the front part of the lane, and you're going to figure out what ball and how fast you need to throw it to have it set up and lay right in front of the 1-3. I just think it keeps it nice and simple for him. There's a 10 pin again. And back to stay clean. Back to back week 10s, but every ball hitting the pocket, now it's just a matter of putting the really good touch on it so the ball goes through the pins a little bit better to carry that 10 pin. Pin separate these two great bowlers. Still a lot of action to come here. Norm Ken cut into the lead in the eighth. Right lane works on a strike. Down by nine and make things very interesting in our conclusion today from Milwaukee. Which he does. Nine Things are eating up here, buddy. Neither player has missed the pocket, Dave. In this match, it's just a matter of pin carry, and that's going to come from the player ma making the best shots and putting the best touch at the bottom yes, of the swing. Norm Duke taking the re-rack now on the left lane. A strike here coming up. Ready, he can take a lead by one. It's the first TV matchup for these two great bowlers since the 2008 PBA World Championship in Wichita. One by Norm. And that's what's known as fallback set shot. Just kind of falls back and it sets right there in front of the pocket. For the lead, foundation frame. You better believe it. Huge strike for Norm Duke. And the wee ice men coming. Up by one. Back-to-back -back huge shots for one of the greatest players in the history of the sport. Norm Duke can strike out to shoot 248. Chris Barnes can strike out to shoot 247. There are not a lot of sports, Randy, where you have active Hall of Famers who are still the best in their sport among all professionals. This is one of them. Very unique, special stage for these legends. Barnes responds, trip on the four. Huge, huge break there, setting up the 10th frame. Otherwise, Duke could have run away and been hit and, won and win this outright. Remember, back-to-back -back flat 10s from Chris Barnes after going double nine spare three bagger. What a time to trip a four pin if you're a right-hander. That's Mungus right there, humongous. And he's ahead by nine. Well, Chris isn't going to go away quietly. Whatever Chris Barnes does in the 10th frame, Norm Duke has to do to win. Chris goes double and nine. Duke has to go double and nine to win by one. So we are set up for a great finish here. Clutch strike. Norm Duke will need at least two strikes in the 10th frame now to win title number 38. 
It's just greatness. Future Hall of Famer. And this is what this level and this sport is all about. Ten pin. Duke needs a double and nine to win by one. Anything less, Chris Barnes wins. Great effort to the top seed. It's all on Norm's shoulders now. Seasoned veteran, holder of seven major titles, does not overreact. He knows one strike's not going to get it done. He knows two strikes isn't going to get it done. He needs a double and at least nine. Looks for five straight, the five bagger. Barnes is defenseless. Nothing he can do now. About two straight. Ten pin. He'll fall short, and Chris Barnes has won his 15th career PBA Tour title. That was some great bowling. The Lucas Oil PBA Milwaukee Open goes to Chris Barnes, and the ball goes to Terrell Owens. <laughs> Autograph copy <laughs> to a great football player from a great bowler, Chris Barnes. Another title. Like Norm Duke, one day he'll be in the Hall of Fame. Terrell loves it. Lucas Oil PBA Milwaukee Open on CBS Sports Network is being brought to you by GEICO. Saving people money on more than just car insurance. By USBC. The national governing body for bowling, providing services, resources, and standards for the sport. To learn more, visit us on bowl.com. And by Lucas Oil, the world leader of high performance and problem solving lubricants for everyday cars and trucks. The PBA Tour returning to the great bowling city of Milwaukee, first time since 2007, and we've seen some tremendous action in the Geico PBA Summer. King of the Swing, presented by Lucas Oil, Chris Barnes, Lozier, Belmonte, Peters, the champ so far in the Geico Summer Swing, joined by Norm Duke with the wild card, thanks to Great Points Production. Our most recent champ, Chris Barnes, joined now by Randy. Thanks, Dave. Chris, just an epic battle, and it came down to the ninth and tenth frame, and you were just... Magnificent in the tenth. What went through your mind late in the game, and what adjustments did you make late after the two flat tens? Uh, the one in the left lane, I got around a little bit, so I just made sure I rolled it. The one right lane, I actually moved to half right. But uh, you know, I'm in a different spot now than I was. I'm seeing new logos, uh, a few new colors, a uh, new bowling ball. That SmackDown was fantastic, and uh, uh, maybe a new me as well. What was that like going up against the Hall of Famer? Man, I've been against him so many times, and he does it just like that. I feel like I got better bar action. He just keeps making shots, keeps making shots, and he always makes you show up. And this time, this time I was finally lucky. He gets more than his fair share against me, I think. Congratulations. This time, Chris Barnes makes the shots. Chris Barnes knocks off Norm Dew, 246-237 for his 15th career PBA title. Be sure to join us Tuesday, July 9th at 7 Eastern for the championship round finals of the Geico PBA Summer King of the Swing as we wrap up our summer series. For Randy Peterson and the entire crew, it's Dave Ryan saying so long from Milwaukee. For scores, highlights, features, and more, go to CBSSports.com. It's been a presentation of CBS Sports Network, a 24-hour home of CBS Sports. Chris Barnes, a winner today in Milwaukee.